daddy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to another NASCAR Diecast review. And today we have the 2022, one of the final 2022 Diecast to ever be made, Caesar Baccarella. Yes, Clear Cryptos 2022 Camaro. And as I almost dropped it, let me say, this is an awesome paint scheme. Bright green, it's it, it's brighter on camera than it is in, uh, off camera. But you have bright green, yellow roof number, it's uh, from Alpha Prime Racing, the number 45 car. It seems like they have a thousand different drivers on their team every year. They're a, they're not a backmarker team, but they're certainly not a top tier team. And that is so cool to see a 164 made. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Alrighty, folks, we're at the good old box in. Here we go. What an awesome diecast. I mean, this is so cool. There's literally a freaking. Uh, Xfinity car from a, a driver and a team I like, probably never expected to see a 164 from. Have they even made a die cast in the 164 scale before? I have no idea. We've gotten some random releases the last few years. I mean, you had the Natalie Decker car, you had the Mike Wallace car, uh, you had the Stephen Parsons car, the Kyle Weatherman cars, uh, even a Joe Nemechek car. So, it's weird, each year we get like two ex super exclusive random releases that are not promos, I might add. Even Landon Castle's Calling Car was so random. Because uh, Calling Racing, they make, they run like a thousand paint schemes every year, and they make like one die cast for all of their drivers and all two series. Stupid. I believe if you run a paint scheme on track, you should, you, you should be forced to make a 164 promo or a full release. That's just me. It, it's a shame that the collectors have to make it. If they want to die cast, 85% of the time in the Xfinity and the Truck Series, they have to make it themselves. It's so stupid. I mean, you go and you watch, you know, Corey Heim win, or go watch, uh, you know, Carson Hosevar win, or Josh Berry, or not Josh Berry, uh, whoever, uh, jo uh, Nemechek win in the Xfinity Series, or the Truck Series, or whatnot, and they make none of the paint schemes. So if you want it, you have to go make it yourself. It's so stupid. You got Xfinity. You got Baccarella right there. You got Clear Cryptos. No trust. Act. Wow. Look uh, at the front of the car. You got Camaro, 45. You got uh, Simpson, ARP, Sunoco. I like this green lip to the top of the splitter. The bottom of it is black, but the top of it looks really cool. Go to the left side of this car. Uh, the number is very well proportioned. I like large numbers on uh, stock cars, specifically the, the middle door number. I, I Look, I know a lot of people prefer the, 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 or I say prefer, but they like the move, the four number. I got to be honest with you. I still prefer the middle door number. I said it before Next Gen started. I said it when they tried it on the Gen 6 cars at the All-Star Race. I like the middle door number. That's just me. That's just my honest opinion. I respect your opinion regardless what it is. That's just my honest opinion. Uh, if it was me, if I was in charge, that'd be the first thing we would do. Because half the paint schemes, just saying, half of the paint schemes don't even use. They don't even use the middle of the door number. Don't believe me? Ask William Byron. <laughs> Anyways, I got Alpha Prime uh, logo. I think right here, the bottom right, forty-five. Oh, they they, they ran the the epic uh, three throwback set at the Southern 500 weekend for the Xfinity race. The 45 car was driven by Karouf. It was uh, it was Adam Petty's uh, sprint car, I think. The the sprint the PCS Dodge or Chevy or whatever it was from 01 or 2000. And they had the 43 car number and then they also had the 44 car number. So they ran Kyle Petty's 03 car and then they ran John Andretti's 01 car. All those paint schemes I just mentioned, the throwbacks, there's like a 99% chance they're not going to get made in the Authentics or the 164 scale in the Gold Series. You're going to have to make them yourself, most likely, barring an absolute miracle. It's so stupid. Got Goodyear right there, Xfinity, Mobile One, Lincoln Welders, Arrowhead Brass. I know I'm just ranting. Uh, got Maxim, 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 whatever that is, Caesar Baccarella. Uh, some contingencies, though. I see Wix air filters. Not sure what the rest is. Go to the back end of the car, clear cryptos, 45, Camaro, no, no trust act. Go to the right side of the die cast. What a beautiful paint scheme, man. I, I'm not a fan of the, 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 the Xfinity body for these these uh, 2020, 
three cars. It's 2019 to 2023. Uh, they've been running this uh, this die cast mold. It is way too thick, in my opinion, because when you compare this car to the real car, and then you look at it from the 124 scale perspective, this car is much thicker uh, than the real life counterpart. A lot of people don't notice that, but it really is. I mean, I'm not even joking. I've stripped these things down to the bare metal. Let me tell you, it is way thicker than it needs to be. Go to the roof of the car. Obviously, you got some cosmetic issues right there. Uh, decal tear, the 45, clearcryptos.com once again, Baccarella. And then you have Capital City Hauling on the gigantic trunk that these Xfinity cars have, which is great for, uh, you know, crashing, you know, the crush panel. So anyways, this is one of those paint schemes that if you were to tell me they were going to offer a 164 for it and then tell me it was actually going to get made, I would have said you were crazy because they literally make no paint schemes. It is so rare how many Xfinity cars they actually make nowadays. I never thought this one would get made, and it got made. I never thought this one would get made, and it did. I didn't think they would make Landon Castle's paint scheme, and they did as well. My point is... There's like a thousand different Xfinity paint schemes every year, and they make maybe 10 of them. Half of them are usually JRM cars, maybe one Joe Gibbs racing car, and the rest are very obscure pieces. That, that's what it seems, at least. It's sad that for most, if not all, the Xfinity cars, if you want them in your collection, you have to make them yourself. It's so stupid. It is asinine. It is stupid. And for the newer fan out there, they used to make... Bush diecast. That was what the Bush, you know, Bush series is what the Xfinity series is nowadays. They would make Bush cars for almost every single driver and paint scheme. There was either a promo for it or a full fledged release. It was not common for them to run a Bush paint scheme in a competitive car and there would be no 164 for it. Like it was rare. It was rare. It's so stupid. I, I just can't even stress it enough. And that's why I'm so thankful that God has taught me how to build these things. Because if I see a paint scheme, I know I can go and make it. And there's something cool about that to me. I love that because I remember years ago, and I'll, I'll, I'll quit ranting here in a minute or so. I remember years ago, I used to get so upset when these die casts would get canceled. I'd be like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? They're not going to make it? Now I'm like, I could care less. I don't pre-order. I don't. I'm like, I pre-order cars that are already made MOQ. I don't pre-order before MOQ. I unless it's a race win for Chase Elliott, I might do it because I know it's going to get made. But besides the point, I don't pre-order for MOQ anymore. I don't because I don't care about the pre-order system. If I want to die cast, I'll just make it myself and be done with it. Sorry for ranting. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Have a blessed one, everybody. Like this paint scheme. I wanted this die cast. I love this die cast. And of course they said nope. Can't have it. Have a blessed everybody. Die cast buffet. Signing off.